This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is for the course ME 273 Statics, and we use the book Statics by R.C. Hibbler. Today I'm going to be talking about Chapter 4.9, Reduction of a Simple Distributed Loading. After today, you will be able to determine an equivalent force for a distributed load, and I'll define what a distributed load is later. So first, we'll look at some applications. Uh, I'll define equivalent force, and then we'll do some problem solving. So here we have a bundle of boards, which is called a bunk. And it's stored on this storage rack. The lumber places a distributed load across the beam, as you can see here. So to analyze the effect of the load on the beam, we need to replace this distributed loading with a single resultant force. And here we have a sign that is um, undergoing a distributed load due to the wind. And so in order to design the joint that attaches the sign to the post, it will be useful to replace this distributed loading with a single force acting at some point on the sign. So other examples of distributed loading are the pressure of water within a tank, uh, weight of sand on the floor of a storage container. Uh, the pressure exerted at each point on the surface indicates the intensity of the loading. Uh, it's used, it's measured using pascals, which is newtons per meter squared or pounds per square foot. Now, for the most common type of loading in engineering practice can be represented along a single axis. For example, look at this beam here. It has a constant width B and is subjected to a pressure loading that varies only along the X axis. And that pressure is uh, loading is denoted by this function P of X. So that's a pressure uh, which changes as X changes. It only contains one variable X. So we can also re represent it as a coplanar distributed load and to do this, we multiply the loading function, this function here, by the width of the beam so that the weighting function, the weight as a function of distance, is equal to the pressure loading times the width of the beam. And that's in newtons per meter or possibly uh, pounds per foot. So this is now um, a weight loading along the x direction. Now, using the methods that we uh, have already investigated, we can replace this coplanar parallel force system with a single equivalent resultant force that you see here located at some distance from the end of the beam. Uh, that distance we call x bar. The um, magnitude of the resultant force is equivalent to the sum of all the forces in the system. So in this case, we need to use integration because we've got uh, a distributed load across some distance. So since this little d sub f is equal to um, So to do that, we're going to make a little uh, d sub f acting on some little d sub x on the beam. Uh, remember, wx is a force per unit length. So therefore, uh, df is going to be equal to the weighting function, w sub x dx. And you can see that right here. w sub x is the height of this differential element and dx is the width, that differential element. So in other words, the uh, resultant force is equal to integration over the length of w of x times dx. And that's the magnitude of the resultant force. It's not a vector. And you can see that here. This system is equivalent to this. This system here is equivalent to this system here and f sub r is calculated using that. 
how do we find out how far away uh, the resultant force is from the origin of the x bar. Now in order to do that, we're going to use a similar technique that we've already used. Um, the, some, the moments due to this distributed load, right, has to be equal to f sub r times x bar. So the question is, how do we determine the moment due to this distributed load? Well, if we have a differential force here acting at df, and it's some distance x away from the origin, then the moment is going to be equal to the uh, integral of x times the weighting function times dx. And of course, that's going to be equal to uh, x bar times f sub r. So solving for x sub bar, we get that um, it is the integral over the length of x times the weighting function dx divided by, that's the moment, right, right here, divided by the resultant force, which we saw earlier is uh, the integral of uh, wx dx. So that's a very important equation there. Now the coordinate x bar locates the geometric center or the centroid of the area under the curve. And you can see that here. Um, C is the centroid of this shaded area. And F sub r is the integral of the distributed load over the length of the beam. So let's look at some examples. Now this rectangular load here of 400 uh, pounds per foot is acting over 10 feet. So since this is a simple shape, it's just a rectangle, the area under there, which is equal to the resultant force, is equal to 10 times 400 or 4,000 pounds. And since it's a rectangle, we know that its centroid is in the center. So its x bar is 5 feet away from this end of the beam. So these two systems are equivalent. And then we also um, have a triangle here and its resultant force is going to be equal to the area of the triangle which you know is uh, f sub r is equal to uh, one half the base which is six times the height which is 600. so that's 1800 newtons and how far away is it from this end of the beam well if you go to the textbook and look in the inside back cover there are tables that indicate what the centroids of all these simple shapes are, circles, triangles, things like that. Now you may already know where the centroid of a triangle is, but I'm going to uh, redraw it for you. So if you have a triangle that has base B and height H, the centroid is located here where this is B over 3 and this is 2 thirds B. So those are distances. So that's what you see here. The resultant uh, force is located at point C, which is located two thirds times six away from the end of the beam, or four meters. Now here's another example. This one has both a triangle and a rectangle involved in it. Um, so we want to find the equivalent force and its location from point A. So distributed loading in this case can be divided into two parts. We can divide it into this. Uh, triangle right here and this rectangle right here and then we'll find the resultant force for each of those simple shapes and their location and then we'll determine the overall uh, resultant load on the uh, beam and its location so let's do the triangle first um, the resultant force is equal to one half the base times the height so one half 6 and the height is 150. So resultant force 1 is equal to 450 pounds. Resultant force 2, it's just this uh, uh, rectangle right here. So we're doing the rectangle. Uh, resultant force 2 is equal to the width times the height. So it's equal to 8 times 150. That's equal to 1,200 pounds. 
Now we need to know x1 and x2, how far away from A do those resultant forces act? Well, do the triangle first. As we saw earlier, the centroid of the triangle is one-third the base from the large end, or two-thirds times the base from the skinny end. So uh, x1 is going to be equal to two-thirds times six, or four feet. And x2 is going to be equal to, well, we're going to move out six feet, right? And then we're going to move out half the width of the rectangle, so that's plus four. And that's equal to ten feet. So the resultant force is equal to uh, FR1 plus FR2. So that's equal to 450 plus 1200 or 1650 pounds. And the resultant moment about the point A is equal to X1 times FR1 plus X2 times FR2. So X1 is 4 feet. Resultant force 1 is 450. And that is negative since it's going uh, clockwise. Likewise, FR2 produces a negative moment about point A, and it is uh, so be minus 10 times FR2, which is 1,200. So you get 13,800 pound feet. It's negative, so it's clockwise. Now the last thing we do is figure out how far away the total resultant force is, right? This uh, 1650 pounds, that's something like this, it's a big 1650. This is the final resultant force due to both of those distributed loadings. Well, I want to know how far away is it. Call that distance D. So we know the, how much moment was in the original uh, configuration. We know the resultant force, so all we have to do is divide those. So uh, D is equal to uh, the moment, 13,800, divided by the resultant force, or 1650. So D is 8.36 feet from A. Okay, let's do another one. Now we have two triangular loads on this beam. We also have an applied load of 15 kilonewtons there and a couple moment of 500 kilonewton meters. Uh, find the equivalent force in couple moments acting at point O. So we're going to divide the distributed loading into two distributed loads, two triangular regions, right? This one and this one. And then we're going to find the resultant force and its location for each of those distributed loads. And then we're going to determine the overall resultant force of the point loading and the couple moment at point O. So let's do the left triangle first, and it is, um, so the resultant force 1 is 1 half times the base of that triangle, which is 7.5 meters, times its height, which is 6 kilonewtons per meter. So resultant force 1 is 22.5 kilonewtons. And the right triangle, FR2, its base, its uh, 4.5 and its height is also 6 kilonewtons per meter so um, that comes out to be 13.5 kilonewtons. Now the locations of these um, FR1 is in a triangle so we know that it is two-thirds times its base right so x1 is equal to two-thirds times seven and a half which is five meters from O. And X2, well, first we've got to go to 7.5 meters. And then we need to go over this amount here, which is uh, four and a half over three. And that equals nine meters. So the total resultant force is equal to FR1 plus FR2. So that equals 22.5 plus 13.5, and that equals 51 kilonewtons. 
And the couple moment about point O is going to be equal to, well, first we've got an applied 500. It's clockwise, so it's negative, so minus 500. The moment due to FR1 is also negative, so it's minus FR1, which is 22.5, times uh, X1, which is 5. And these FR2 is also a negative moment, so it would be minus FR2, which is 13.5, times X2, which is 9. And lastly, we have this applied 15 kilonewton force. It also produces a negative moment, so it's minus 15 times the width of the beam, which is 12 meters. So the resultant moment is 914 uh, kilonewton meters. This concludes the lecture on Chapter 4.9, Reduction of a Simple Distributed Loading. Uh, the next video will be Chapter 5.1, Condition for Rigid Body Equilibrium, and Chapter 5.2, Free Body Diagrams. See you in cyberspace.